As, uh, as our honored guests take the stage, I have the privilege of introducing one, someone that I've known for, for quite a long time. She is a United States Senator representing Tennessee. Now, to give you the very shortest bit of history, when the U.S. government was created in the 1760s, there were two legislatures. There was one called the House of Representatives, and that was to be divided by the population, and the other was the Senate, and each state would have two senators. And the purpose for that was so that every state would have equal rights within the Senate. And the Senate has very unique powers. For one thing, they're the only body that can approve treaties, which arrange all of our international relations. They also provide advice and consent on political appointments from the presidency. And we are so delighted that our honored guest is one of only 100 United States senators, 330 million people in the country, only 100 senators. It's delightful. She has spent more than 25 years in public service after a distinguished career before that. And what is most exciting about her public service is that she focuses on things that make a difference. The committees she works with are commerce, science, and transportation, which helps provide for all of our future. Veterans Affairs, which takes care of people that represented us in our various armed conflicts. The Armed Services Committee, which works very hard to keep our country safe and our alliance with NATO very, very strong. And the Judiciary Committee, which are the judges that help keep everything in balance within our, our country. And the most exciting thing I get to say about her is that she is a book girl. Uh, Four summers, one of the first women to sell books for Southwest, and one of the first female sales managers, an amazing leader, a tremendous representative of what our country does very best. Please welcome U.S. Senator Marsha Blackburn. have just a little bit of enthusiasm, <laughs> right? So you're happy to be here? Yeah. Okay, that is wonderful. Well, it is good to be with you. Let me start out by asking each of you a question. Have you ever gotten ready to walk in a room and you think, okay, if I go through that door, I'm going to be the only one like me in that room. You know kind of how that feels, right? And sometimes you're dealing with a political difference or you're dealing with a language barrier or you're dealing with being the only girl in the room. And so you know how that feels. You're going to, well, that's kind of the way I feel, felt the first time I ever came to sales school. And, but it was a great experience. And I never wanted to let that feeling of being the only one or being different or uh, that negativism that can kind of creep in to stop me from doing what I wanted to do. And I think you make that decision as to whether you are going to stick with your plan or you're going to let your insecurities kind of derail you. Ever had that, that feeling? You just weren't sure? And so, you know, that first year when I went to sell school, I thought, well, I can make that choice. I can be the only girl in the room or I can just say, eh, you know, I'm going to give up. Well, I think you know what I decided to do. <laughs> so I think it's really important that you all remember, if I persist, there you go. That's right. So very true. And indeed, you will. And if you persist, of course, you're going to succeed. You're not going to be somebody to give up. And this is something that is so important to think about. If you succeed here, you're going to take those lessons and you're going to succeed in your career. I became 
the first female to represent Tennessee in the U.S. Senate. And as I did that, <laughs> as I did that, I took a lot of lessons with me that I had learned as I was a student manager and a sales manager and taking those experiences with me into the, my private sector career and then into my public se sector career. And you all are going to do the same thing. Now, the ambassador and I were just talking, where are all of our Bulgarians? <laughs> We got a little national pride there, <laughs> just a little bit. But the ambassador and I were talking about, you, you all are the ones. You're going to take these lessons. You're going to head back to Bulgaria. You're going to be entrepreneurs. You're going to start businesses. And you're going to do great things for your country. And that is exactly what we are hopeful for you and for your careers. And the ambassador is planning on you all doing that too. You know, help raise the GDP, right? <laughs> now, stepping out on your own, that can be a little bit scary, but sometimes you just have to take a deep breath and think about it. When you are doing something new and expanding your horizons, it gives you the opportunity to kind of reinvent your own approach to success. Think about that. If you haven't liked some of the things that you did in the past, or you thought maybe you had some habits that weren't really great, you can kind of reinvent all of those, which means that every step you're going to take every single step you're going to take is going to help set you apart from the crowd. Your differences are your tools. Think about that one. And your inexperience is a learning opportunity. So I want you to take advantage of that. Your differences and your inexperience and put them to work for you. Whether you're the first person in your family to attend university, or maybe the first to come to the United States, or to start your own business, you're setting yourself apart, and you're setting yourself up perfectly for what comes next. And that is going to be your first sale. And then it's going to be your first major sale. And then it's going to be the first sale that just really knocks you off your feet. And you leave that house and you're going, yes, I can't believe I did that. I feel happy. I feel healthy. I feel terrific. And then you're also going to have your very first lost sale. And then you're going to have that very first sale that you think you're going to lose, and then you pull it back. And then you leave that house, and you think, yes, I did it. I feel happy. I feel healthy. I feel terrific. And that is something that is going to end up mattering to you. And success or failure, what matters through all of this is that you're learning. When my kids were growing up and when they had had a really bad day and they were letting the negatives set in, you know what I would tell them? There is no such thing as a failed test. Now, I know some of your professors don't agree with that, <laughs> but they're wrong. There is no such thing as a fail test because everything you do, you learn from it. And I guarantee you, if you made those mistakes, you're not going to make those mistakes again, are you? So, 
And learning, I will tell you this, is something you're going to do a whole lot of this summer. As exchange visitors participating in the Southwestern Great American Advantage Program, you're joining a legacy that reaches beyond sales. The work and the traveling you'll do is all part of what we call public diplomacy, speaking and working directly with Americans and building relationships on a personal level. You'll be connecting via the same practices of entrepreneurship and free enterprise that built this country from the ground up. That might feel like a big undertaking, but you won't be alone. Students from all over the world come to America every year to build their own businesses and then apply the lessons they've learned in their very own communities. You're gonna go back home and you're going to do this. Another thing that you'll see growing within yourself is a real appreciation for Americans and for our communities. You'll understand how we think, what motivates us, how we work, and what matters most. And you'll take that knowledge and that feeling home with you also and apply what you've learned to whatever it is that is going to come next. I have to tell you, you're going to meet a lot of people this summer but if there's one thing the hundreds of meetings I take every single year has taught me, it's that even one conversation, just one single conversation, can have a lasting impact. So just think about all of the ripples that you all are going to create this summer. You're going to be a standout in the communities where you go. Beyond that, and on a more personal level, you're going to take away skills that you'll use for the rest of your life, no matter where you go and no matter what your career is chosen to be. I moved away from sales and into statesmanship, but every day, I encounter situations that take me back to the lessons that I learned while sitting right where you're sitting. You're, you're going to learn persistence. What was that mantra again? If I persist, I will succeed. You will learn to read a room and think quickly on your feet. This one is so vitally important, learning how to read a room and think on your feet. That is important no matter what you're doing. One of the greatest things you'll learn is when you need to kind of change your pitch a little bit. And speaking of that, you will learn how to come up with the fastest pitch of your life. <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten nearly as far as I have without knowing how to catch the interest of somebody and do it in that first impression 30 seconds. And by the end of the summer, you all are going to be an expert at it. You're going to learn how to control your temper and you're going to learn how to keep a positive outlook. If a career in politics has taught me anything, it's that a positive outlook is the only thing that is going to get you through your very worst days. When things are slow, or it's raining, or the dog has bitten you, or you're hungry, and your phone is dead, and you just wanna go home. If you have that positive outlook ingrained in your mind and in your habits, you won't go home. You will stay there, you'll work, you'll persist, and you'll get the job done. And at the end of the day, you'll be glad you did because you will have learned from that situation. And you'll think, I'm better because I chose to work through this rather than letting the situation control me. You worked through it. And if you can develop and apply those skills when you're in unfamiliar territory, imagine what you're going to do when you get back home. 